God's good. He's a good, good father. I'm not done. He, he's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I make a promise to you, I'll do everything I can to meet it, but I may fail. But he will never fail in his promises to you and to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. 
Boy, I want to sing, there's a Marine rising up. <laughs> rising up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I quit right now, I could say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to share a message with you this morning. How many like being victorious? How many want to see the kingdom of God build up? Hallelujah. I'm glad you said yes. I'm going to share a message this morning. Uh, dealing with how we can be, I'll, I'll use the word successful for lack of another word, in our walk with God and building the kingdom of God. You see, I honestly believe this is not it. When Linda and I came, I told Linda when we first started coming here, and you guys were before COVID and you was all, almost running, but just about knocking down 200, and I said, we're going to stay at least till we see that 200. <laughs> Looks like we're going to stay just a little bit longer, but we're going to see that 200. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 One of our superintendents years ago, he said this to a bunch of young ministers. If you will read the Bible, you will have something to say. Okay? If you pray, you will have the power to say it. And if you witness, you will have someone to say it too. Now, I know that was, that was for a bunch of us young preachers. I wasn't a young preacher. I just entered ministry later in life. So I guess I was young in ministry. So, But I'm going to bring that down to us today. I want to say that if you want to see this church grow and build, if you'll read the Word... You'll have something to say. If you'll pray, you'll have the power and the anointing to say it. And if you'll witness, there'll be people coming into this church to receive Christ. Now, that doesn't mean you can't lead them to Christ, then bring them in already saved. That would be great. If you want to see the church grow, we've got to reach out. We got to reach out. I've got a. I, I got my New Testament. Holy Bible, write the word. The word is truth. John seventeen seventeen. And I'm going to tell you what this is, and this is this is just to let you know. You know when when Jesus and some of the disciples and others went into the synagogue. Everything was on a scroll. Can you imagine them saying, okay, go get me scroll 18. Uh, John 12 or, or Deuteronomy 5 or 6, whatever. Go get me that scroll 18 so I can read that. No, that ain't the way that it was. Everybody hold up your Bible if you got one with you. How many would like to carry this around? This is my New Testament. Back when we was at Paintneyville, Linda's dad said that he had heard in the evangel about a church, I believe out in Seattle, that had started a program and they were was write the they write the word. This is all handwritten. It was bound, and this is the handwritten New Testament. There's four more volumes for the old. 
These are full 11 by 14 sheets of paper. I had to mark this because this was kind of like the scrolls where they, they didn't really have the markings and, and the tell you where you're at and everything. But this is John chapter 3, verse 16. And I, I'm going to read it. I can quote it, but I'm going to read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. I quoted the 17th. I show you this only just to give you an idea of how valuable the Word of God is to us. I seen Brother Eric when I said, show me your Bible, and he held up his phone. How many have got a Bible on your phone? You want to carry that phone or you want to carry this? I'm going to lay this down. It doesn't matter if you've got it written, hand, whether it's been printed or whether it's on your phone electronically. We need the Word of God. My pastor said, if you'll read the word, you will have something to say. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We need to read the Word. There are a lot of things in there that are fresh and new every day. How many of you have ever been reading the Word and you read a, a passage of Scripture that you'd read a lot of times and all of a sudden the word, there's a word or something comes out and you, and you say, I didn't see that before. It's fresh. It's living. It's alive. So we need to understand that when we get the Word of God on the inside, it's the discerner of the heart. It's also there to correct and direct and instruct. It's to build up that army of God that's rising up. Now, you all getting quiet now. now. You can shout a little bit if you want to, and it won't bother me a bit. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 through 17, if, if you find your way there, you're going to find out that the Word of God is so powerful and so important that we realize and need those things from God. We need those things from God. Now, I've, out of, out of uh, uh, the verses 15 through 17, 2 Timothy 3, 15, I'm not, I'm not reading yet. It says it makes wise unto salvation. <laughs> How many want to be wise? <laughs> I need to be wise, Lord. I need your, I need your instruction. <laughs> uh, I finally got there. It says, verse 15, And from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. Wise. Unto salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It goes on in verse 15. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is God breathed. It is the word of God. And fortunately we don't have to carry around 30 pound Bibles. We can put it on our phone or carry a small New Testament or carry the whole canon. You, don't, you, know, you need it all. And carry it around and, 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 and understand what God 
is talking about and what he wants to do. If we want this church to go, we've got to be a Bible-believing church. I'm not saying we're not. What I'm saying is we need to know more about what the Word of God says. It makes wise unto salvation. It, it's so powerful and mighty. Then in verse 15 also it says, it'll produce faith. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say faith comes by hearing the news. Boy, I thought I'd get a big amen on that one. I say about, about all the news is really good for anymore is to just keep telling me how Scripture is being fulfilled, how the end is coming, how that army of God is raising up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hearing. It produces faith. What do we need to be hearing? The Word of God. We hear too much other stuff and not enough of the Word. If we will get in the Word and read the Word, then we will have something to share to a lost and dying world. Amen? It's important for us to do that. It, the Scripture is also to make Jesus Christ known. It reveals to us the truth about Christ, the truth about what he says, the things that we need to understand, the things that we really need to be sharing with others of the good news of Jesus Christ. How many know it's good news? Hallelujah. It makes Christ known in us. It also builds us up. Acts 20, verse 32. I'm going to turn over there real quick. Now, y'all, this is fresh. This ain't one pulled out of the closet. It's fresh. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but God does. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and, oh, oh my, and give you an inheritance. Hallelujah. Among all them which are sanctified. I want you to know if you read the word, it will begin to build up. I may know you're not as strong as you could be. How many know you're not as close to God as you can be? Scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you share the word of God, you want to, you want to give it correctly. You want to give it the correct meaning. You need to understand. You need to spend time in the word. It'll build you up. It gives you that inheritance. It'll produce profit in doctrine, reproof, correction, and instructions in righteousness. How many, how many like somebody to, to correct you? I'm right. They don't know what they're talking about. When you get in the Word and you read the Word and the Word brings out something and your spirit says, that's something you need to correct in your life. You need to put that in practice in your life. It is God reproving, correcting, and bringing us to the place that we're, we're ex exhibiting and showing the doctrine and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, doctrine's not all bad. Doctrine is not all bad. 
Christ taught doctrine. He, he told us some things that we need to do. We, there's times that we need to get in the Word and we need to understand doctrine. We, under, we need to be reproved, corrected, and instructed in how to be righteous before God. I think our world needs to learn, and I think some of our churches need to learn what righteousness truly is. I don't know about you, but I see these individuals on TV, these stars and athletes. Anybody been watching the, the playoffs, the baseball? Well, hooray, praise God. <laughs> Linda, we got to repent. <laughs> the whole point I was going to make is you see them come out and they'll have a great big gold chain. And a great big cross on the end of it. And then they'll say something like, I thank, my, I thank God for this blessing on my life or this attribute or whatever. I can't think of the word I really want to use. And then the next thing, you see no likeness of Christ at all. How many on Facebook? Now listen, Facebook's not all bad. I'm not preaching against all Facebook. But how many of you have ever seen somebody on Facebook make a statement for God and then turn around and, and, and totally annihilate what they just said? It's time that the army of God rises up and the word of God leads and guides and directs so that we go forth and take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Oh, two or three believe that. Let's go. Hallelujah. Now, also in verse 17 of what I read to you, it's, it, let me read it to you. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All men are perfect. <laughs> Don't ask my wife. What does that mean? The Word of God will make us perfect, which means making us into the image of Christ, not that we're perfect, but that the work that He does in us and through us will be perfect. Unto all good works. Good works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want, to, I want to read this. This is a tribute to the Bible. It's found in Dakes. If you, want to, if you have a Dakes Bible, you can find it on page 241 of the New Testament. And I'm just reading the last part. It says, a tribute to the Bible. It is the book that reveals the mind of God. The state of man. The way of salvation. The doom of of sinners and the happiness of the believers. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts binding. Its histories true. And its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be safe. And practice it to be holy. You guys must not be getting as much out of this as I did. The Bible contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. <laughs> it is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here heaven is open and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject. Our good is its design, and the glory of God its end. Now, let me, I'm going I'm to take a little bit of time on that. Christ is the grand subject. The Bible shows us 
the way of Christ. It is for our good. It's for our good. For without the knowledge that's in the Word, you will not find salvation. And it's the glory of God in the end. <laughs> oh, let me read on. It should fill your memory. The Bible should fill your memory, rule your heart, and guide your feet in righteousness and true holiness. Come on. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully, meditatively, meditatively, searchingly, devotionally, and study its constantly. Perseveringly and industrially. How important is the Word of God to me, to you? It becomes very evident when we start looking at our lives and how much time we really spend in the Word of God. Now you're quiet. If we're going to see this church girl, we're going to get into the Word. I'm going to, I'm going to finish this up. Read it through and through until it becomes a part of your being and generates faith that will move mountains. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Till it generates faith that will move mountains. Hallelujah. The Bible is mine of wealth, the source of health, and a world of pleasure. You see, so many people think this world is pleasurable, but they don't know the true pleasures that God has for His children. The true pleasures that God has for us as He leads us and guides us. We can walk through this world and be victorious. I'm just about finished. It is given you in this life will be opened at the judgment and will stand forever. Hallelujah. His word is true. His word is true. It will stand forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the least of the leads to the greatest of labor and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred content. <laughs> Read. Read the Bible. Read the Word of God. If you'll read the Word of God, you'll have something to say. I want you to think about how many people that you come across when you're in the store or wherever and they're almost like they have no hope left. Totally wiped out by where this world is at and where it's headed. But in the Word, we find the words of comfort to give to those that will point them towards Christ and give them a joy and a peace that passes all understanding. John 8, 31 and 32, Then Jesus said unto those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. 
whether you got it in your Bible, whether you got it on your phone. Take time and read it. If we'll start reading the Word and standing on the Word of God, we'll begin to see things change and happen in our lives. And when they start changing in us, we'll start seeing things moving forward here in a greater way. I tell you what, I, after worship this morning, I, 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 was, I, was, I was happy. I was ready. But this is what God gave me to give to the church. Listen to this statement. I don't know who made this statement. It wasn't me. I'm not that smart. You could spend a lifetime attempting to master the written word when what is needed is to be mastered by Christ, the living word. Hallelujah. We need to be mastered by Christ, the living word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second thing he said, if you'll pray, you'll have the power to say it. Anybody ever heard this excuse? Well, I don't win this because I just don't know what to say. Pray. Pray and let God put words in your mouth. Let God take the things that you receive out of the word and begin to express them to a lost and dying world. If we'll do that, we will have the power and the anointing to say that. Now, if you need to hear something on prayer, you should have been here last Wednesday night. Pastor preached a jewel on the principles of prayer. Prayer. Getting in the presence of God, spending time with Him, letting Him change me. <laughs> I wish I could say I'm perfect, but I don't want to lie. But it's sure comfort when I can go to God in prayer. We used to sing that song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet Hour of Prayer. That takes me from this world of care. <laughs> First John 3.22 says, and, whosoever, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So I want you to catch this, John 3.22, you might, 1 John 3.22. It says, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Everybody say amen. amen. <laughs> God wants to supply, but listen to the rest of that. We receive of him because... Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God wants to fellowship with you more than you want to fellowship with him. And we can do that every day of our life in prayer. I'll tell you what, you can't get that kind of an audience from the president. <laughs> if you'd want to. You can't get that kind of audience from from individuals but we have the right to come into the presence of God at any time in prayer and we can petition our God the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he'll hear us I don't I don't understand how he can hear this group praying and that group praying and that group praying and this group praying at the same time but he's God. He's God. Okay, let me go on a little bit. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it did say according to his will. Now, we shouldn't pray that way if we already know the will of God. Pastor brought that out. It is God's will 
that none should perish, but all come to repentance. That's what the Word says. You don't have to pray about somebody. Well, I don't know if God wants to save them. No, God wants to save them. He wants us. He loves us. It doesn't mean necessarily everything on this earth is going to be just hunky-dory. Excuse that metaphor. It may not be just perfect. But this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, and I'm not looking for a cabin in the corner of glory. That's not what he said. He said, I go to prepare a mansion that where I am, there you may be also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. You see, each and every one has a place that Christ is preparing for them. So, number one, in prayer, we need to please God. Number two, we need to come to God with the right attitude and right motives. Matthew 6, 5 through 15. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for the love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray unto the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. And then it goes into the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Pray. Pastor was bringing out, we need to pray. All of those things that we know. Praying that God would have His way. How many of you believe this church should be running over 200. You know, right now, if every church this morning in Marion was full to capacity, there would still be people not able to get in. We have a big, big job to do. And we need to be praying and seeking the face of God. Matthew 7, 7, 11 says, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there of you, whom if the son asks bread, will he give him a stone, or if he asks fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? Philippians 4, 6, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Ye seek and have not, because ye ask not. That's not a perfect quote. What are we asking for? We need to be asking things according to the will of God. If you really want to be an individual, you, if you want to take over a class, take these three things. And begin to apply them in your life that I read the word, read it often, pray, and seek God's face, and let his anointing rest upon you, and be willing to witness, and you can grow a class. I believe with all of my heart this church can be so full. Let me tell you. There's a couple things, and probably more, that pastors really enjoy that problem. we got to get chairs out. There's so many people here. 
We're going to have to buy another lot so that people can park their cars. Those kind of problems we love to deal with. I will guarantee you where the Spirit of God is, people will come. Hallelujah. Number three, we need to believe that He is. John 16, 23 says, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, He will give it you. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We need to be seeking after God. I want you to know, building this church is not left up to Sister Gala and Pastor Russell. They're the leaders. They guide us. They help us. They instruct us. But it's you and me that are supposed to build the church. Now, they have their responsibility, too, as a witness. I've shared this before, and I'll share it again. Forgive me for my age. In the Marine Corps, when I went in years and years and years ago, everybody had the same MOS. You carried a gun, and you were a grunt. Everybody had that MOS. We had secondary MOSs. Mine was 3531. If you want to know what that was, it's a truck driver. So I filled my position as a truck driver, but when it was necessary, it reverted back to that first, <laughs> that first MOS, and we became a grunt again. Well, I want you to know something. Your first MOS as a Christian is to be a witness. You may be leading worship. You may be teaching a Sunday school class. You may be the pastor. But everyone's MOS as a Christian is to be that witness for Christ. We're in that third one, a witness. Oh, I missed something. I want to go back. You let me do that? James 4, 1, 4 through 8 says, But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven, and the wind, and tossed. The wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I, I want to read that because we need to be dead set. Knowing. Do you know what you believe? Do you know what you believe? We need to know why we believe the things we believe. Here's where I want to come back to. I believe this was written by A.J. Gordon. I seen at one time somebody else's name on it, but uh, the one I seen said A.J. Gordon. You can do more than pray after you have prayed, but you can never do more than pray until you have prayed. Your pastor, when he gets up here to preach, I know some of the things that he goes through. I'm truly honored and blessed to even be asked to stand up here. But you can ask my wife, and you can ask Gala, 
that when it comes Friday night, and especially Saturday, things change. Not that our witness changes, but there's a seriousness. Look through the scripture that we've prepared. Pray and seek the face of God because when we stand before you, there's only one thing I want you to see, and that is Jesus Christ. That's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Witnesses. If you'll read the word, if you'll pray, seriously pray, then you'll have the power to say what reading gave you to say. And if we'll witness, we'll have people to say it to. Now, in the years of ministry that I've been here, I found out one thing. That's definite. God cannot save pews. First of all, he didn't die for pews. He died for people. For us to be the church that we're supposed to be, we've got to be witnesses. Ray Comfort, I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, but he, he is an evangelist and does a lot about witnessing. And he has different things that he uses. Listen, I wish I had a banana right now. Have you ever noticed the shape of a banana? When you go home, pull one off the counter and get a hold of it. And it has just enough size to fit in all the grooves of your finger that you can hold it perfectly without any kind of strain or anything. Isn't that neat? Now, was that a total accident that banana was made that way? But it also it has one of those easy open. <laughs> Convenient. Most of you guys open it from the stem. I turn it over and open it from the, and you just pinch that and it'll peel right off. Sometimes you open it with a stem, it'll smash it. But it. How many drink soda out of cans? How many know that that was formed over thousands of years and things just begun to come together and it formed this can that we call a can and it has that little dimple in the bottom to make it strong just happened over years, thousands of years. Got that easy top like a banana, or easy open like a banana. And then over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, this pigment began to form on the side of the can. Some of them say Pepsi. Some of them say Coke. Fanta. But it evolved over thousands of years. Now I'm going to tell you right now, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does in a creator. There was a creator that formed that banana. There was a, there was a, a designer, an engineer that said, hey, instead of putting all of this in bottles, we can take it and mold this metal and, and make this the, that, and put that that top on there and, and we could put the colors on the side and, and we could sell it and it'll, get, it'll make the soda get cold quicker and stuff. There was a designer. There was a designer. And I, I want you to know there's a designer. There was a guy, there was a God that created this heaven and this earth and he formed it for the purpose for you and I to live here and I want to witness for him 
because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Tell me, how in the world they set the world in the universe into such a place and spun the world and put a wobble in it. You see, the wobble gives us seasons. The turning gives us days and night. But it stays in that same spot. Because if it moved, if this earth moved a little closer to the sun, we'd burn up. If it moved a little farther away, we'd freeze. God. The great designer. We need to be witnesses for him. Now let me let me give you some scripture. Acts 1 8 says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the earth. We are called to be witnesses. Those examples that I just gave you are for the purpose of encouraging you to begin to speak those things that are true to those of your friends and those that you're around about the Creator that made this earth and made this world that we live in and that His Son died on a cross so they might have the ability to come into the presence of the Father and receive all that God intended for them. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We like that part, but then it says ye shall be witnesses. You know, sometimes we, we're a little reluctant to share that because we don't want to offend someone. Heaven help us. It's not offending them. It's throwing them a lifeline. Without that lifeline, they're never going to find the trueness of God. Hallelujah. We're all witnesses. Acts 2.32 says, Jesus hath God raised up, therefore we are all witnesses. Acts 3.15, And kill the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof ye are witnesses. 5.32 says, We are the witnesses of these things. And also, Boy, I can't even read my own writing. Also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey Him. I want you to understand something that we are witnesses. It doesn't mean that we become a, a evangelist. It doesn't mean that we have to go to a, a foreign country. It means that we're willing to share the good news of Christ Jesus with someone at Walmart, someone at Target, someone at a different place, your neighbor next door to you, that you share the good news of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius has a vision. Tells him, calls Simon Peter. He's uh, living at one Simon the Tanner's house. Send man to bring him. Cornelius, centurion, immediately sends men to go find him. When they get to the Simon the Tanner's house, and I'm, I'm leaving a little bit of things out. You need to read that. Peter is up on the rooftop, and he's praying. And God gives him a vision of a sheet. And that sheet is lowered down. And a voice says, because Peter was hungry, he said, Arise and kill and eat. Nay, Lord, I have never had anything that was common and unclean. And the sheet goes back up. Two more times it does the same thing. 
the voice says, what I have cleansed, don't call common and unclean. At that moment, those guys knocked on the door and said, we're looking for Peter, Simon Peter. The, the voice tells Peter to go down under these men, doubt nothing, go with them. They come in, the next morning they take off, they go, and when they arrive at Cornelius' house, his servants lead Peter there. There are, his house was full. Cornelius was enough of a witness and shared the good news of what he knew about Christ that his house was full. And he says to Peter, Thou have done good coming. We're, we're glad you're here. We, we needed you to come. And he said this, and, he, and Peter said, Why would you call me? And he gave him the explanation of the vision and everything. That whole chapter is just marvelous. It really is. And Peter says, and begins to preach Christ. Begins to preach Christ. And as he was preaching this, and as he was sharing it, and, I, and, and if you'll read it, you'll, you're going to see this. As, as he was doing that, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, fell on those that are in the house and they began to speak in tongues. Can I, can, can I just say, that's the Gentiles. That's the Gentiles Pentecost. We're all included. How can we not speak and witness of a God that loves us so much that he would he'd send his son to die on a cross and then provide everything that we have need of in service to him. Peter says, can we deny these guys that have received the Holy Spirit as we have? Can we deny them to be baptized in water as we have been? And they, they were all baptized in water. There, there is something you need to understand. It is important for us to be a witness, not just so that we, we grow the numbers in the church, but that we build the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is all important. It is what we're living for. It's what we're doing is because of Christ and what he's done in our hearts and in our lives. Hallelujah. If you would come. The pattern in the book of Acts is that they preached and they witnessed of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. You want to do something? Go to your book of Acts and begin to read through there and underline and mark every time the resurrection of Christ is mentioned. It was one of the main themes that they were sharing with those people that Christ rose from the dead, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you and me. It is His resurrection that makes everything come into play. <laughs> if there's nothing we can say to someone we ought to be able to tell them that Jesus died and rose again because he loved you because he loved me but because he loved you Acts chapter 3, verse 4, and I'm going to end with this. Acts 4 says, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, 
Look on us. Look on us. They're on their way to the temple at the hour of prayer. Verse 5 says, the beggar that was sitting there. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. We got to be and come to the place that when we share, when we witness, that people will be expecting to receive something from God. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And it says he reached down and picked him up. And strength came to his legs. And he began to walk and leap and praising God and entered into the temple, this beggar that had been there for years. The world, we need to be so genuine so that the world can expect to receive something from us when we share with them. Silver and gold. You're not going to take it with you. But what I have, I can give you. The love of Christ Jesus. And it will make the difference in your life now and in your life for eternity. If you will read the word, you will have something to say. Something of value to say. If you will pray, you will have the power, the anointing upon your life to say it. And if you'll witness, you'll have someone to say it to. Guys, this is not a downer. This is building the church. This is building the kingdom of God. Building the kingdom of God. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Would you stand with me this morning? Some of us will be going out to eat. Some of us will be going home, be with family or just our loved ones. This I pray that the Holy Spirit has taken some of the word this morning and placed it in your heart to such a point that you want to be that witness that God already knows you can be. That servant that God already knows you can be. God loves us and we have a lost and dying world that we live around that we need to share the good news of Jesus Christ with. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, there's no better time than right now to give him your life and you can receive all that God has intended for you. You see, God is building that army and he's building it with you and me and some that's not even in the family yet is going to be a part of that army if you're willing and able not really able because God will make you able if you're willing God will use you use you for your family for your friends for your co-workers and for some of those that you may not even suspect 
Read the word. Put it into practice in your life. Pray and ask for God's leadership and anointing on your life. And share the good news of Jesus Christ with those you're given the opportunity to. And the kingdom of God will be built. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before your children this morning. I thank you for the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. To share an encouraging word, Lord, that how we can be more efficient and more effective in your work, Lord. Father, I do believe that some chains fell off this morning during the worship. I do believe with all of my heart that you spoke to individuals this morning. And I pray, Father, right now that the Holy Spirit will take the word and place it in our hearts that we can be more like Christ than we've ever been before. And we can be a witness for your glory and your honor. I ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask this question. If you're here the, and this morning, you just need a touch from the Lord. You're really, really not that witness, really not that deep in the word, really not praying like you should. I want to pray that God will give you a hunger for the word, a desire to pray, and then the boldness to be a witness for Christ. If that's you, would you slip your hand up this morning? And I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I've got both mine up. I want to be more for him because he's done so much for me. Let's pray one more prayer this morning. Father, you see our hearts and our lives and you saw the hands that were raised. And Father, it is our desire to be more like Christ. I ask, Father, you give us a hunger for your word, a desire to pray and fellowship with you. And, Father, a great desire to share with others the good news that you've given to us. Help us to be those that build the kingdom of God through your anointing, your power, and your wisdom. And Lord, we'll give you praise and thanksgiving for that. We'll thank you for that. As we leave here this morning, I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit, as he goes with us, he would continue to minister to our hearts and our lives. And let us give you all the praise and all the glory. For those that some chains fell off this morning, I pray, Father, you'd help them to walk in that new freedom that they have in you, Lord. Father, I pray you touch those of our family that need to be healed. We just lay them at the foot of the cross and ask, Father, that you would work a mighty work. Now, Father, may I say, we are grateful and thankful for your many blessings and the love that you've shown towards us. Go with us. Keep your hand upon us and use us for your glory and your honor. I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go from here in victory, knowing full well that God is able to do, I love this scripture, exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think. God can use each and every one of us for his glory. Share your love one with another. And the Lord richly bless you and your family.